So I just got off a call. Uh, they were an art supplies company and they were doing really well selling on Amazon. However, Amazon was taking about 35, 40% margin. Um, they didn't know what the in-store retail margin would look like. So I'm gonna go over that call. I'm gonna go over all the numbers that we hit on the call, make sure that you know, you're aware what the cost difference is when going from an online platform into an in-store retail platform and the path to market that you should be pursuing when considering taking that uh, step. So um, if anything uh, resonates with you, please uh, like and subscribe. And you know, if you have any questions, please comment below and I'd be happy to answer those for you. But this was a unique product because she was really going for a more higher end uh, client that was looking to do more of a therapeutic uh, program with art. Um, doing really well online, did about a quarter million dollars last year. As far as a couple SKUs, that's pretty good. Um, but she didn't know about going into retail, what that would translate to. So the cost of goods sold on average was around $6.50. It was retailing for around 22, which sounds like a huge spread until you start adding the numbers together. So Amazon was taking, uh, I think, a six dollars, six fifty, off of the sale price with logistics and their fees. Um, so she was making a really healthy margin online. But when you're looking at going into in-store retail, the retailer is going to want about 50 percent. So that 22 gets chopped down to 11 pretty fast. Um, of that 11, you have to build in a margin for your next step, which would be distribution. So when you're at the 11, you want to drop it down another $3 for distributors, uh, which is usually between 20 to 30 percent. And then you're sitting at um, eight and a half, nine dollars uh, around there. And then you're going to want to factor in logistics fees. So you're going to want to factor in, you know, 50 cents to a dollar for logistics fees and um, you know, all the incumbents, which really brings it down to about her cost of goods price. Uh, so she would be making maybe a dollar uh, per item as opposed to $10 that she was making online. So after factoring that in, it wasn't the best fit, but there is a way to go about testing it, um, making sure that it is an opportunity or if it's not the right fit, what can be an opportunity. So what I told her was that she should start local. Um, I know that Joann's and Michael's both have uh, local buying programs where they empower their local and regional managers to buy local items. Um, so that's what she's going to do. She's going to speak to her local stores, try to get the product on the shelf, get it featured in the local section, um, get some sales results. Because once you're able to see that volume that's when you're able to drop that cost of goods sold and make more profit so the profit wasn't there once we applied the retail uh, formula however that doesn't mean that with an increase in volume her cost of goods can't drop considerably and at that point she would then be making more money online but also she would have a much more broad retail path so that you know if somebody came in as an incumbent online and knocked her out, if an Amazon Basics product um, you know, took her off that top spot, you know, she wouldn't be stuck with a one or two SKUs uh, that's floating her whole business. So it's important to diversify. It's important to get that retail number strategy in order and start local, uh, build regional, and then take it national.